Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Subbing me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo TJ's Path. So apparently it only gets worse from here. So uh, before we get into that, y'all, I am now an affiliate with Green Man Gaming. What that means is that there's going to be a link in the description of each video. Y'all click that link, you go to their website, you get discounts on all the latest and greatest games, and I get commission based on whatever y'all buy. So if y'all looking to get any kind of new games or old games or whatever y'all are looking for, Green Man Gaming probably has what you need. Also, my lovely girlfriend Elle is, com is, a, is commissioning art right now. They are now open, and uh, I've got her Twitter and her FA info in the description if y'all want to message her for some commission info and such. If y'all just want to get throw some money at her, get some art made. Anyway, y'all, let's jump right into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Oh, boy. <clears throat> yep. I've seen his eyes, what he's about to do. I back away, stumbling, but that's when he rushes, tackling me to the ground and crushing me into the hard, sharp rocks underneath. Unlike yesterday, all of my strength and confidence has abandoned me. It's like whatever has been driving me has left me right at this moment, taking, taking several steps back to watch. Like it wanted this to happen all along. Flynn's fists find my face, first one on the right side, then another on the left. Each one brings a flash of light to my vision, and at that moment, all sense leaves me. It's kind of nice in a way, like I don't have to be present for the horror that I've brought on myself. A few more punches come my way. The impact's like earthquakes in my head, but I don't feel any pain. Instead, they leave me feeling stunned, like I'd been electrocuted. I can feel blood pouring from my nose like a faucet, though, and soon it fills my mouth with that familiar metallic taste. You fucking piece of shit! You think you can just play with me like this?! His strong, big hands find my neck and start to squeeze. Through blurred vision, I can see him above me, eyes filled with tears, glaring down at me with a rage that I didn't think was possible. You little shit! You won't fucking get away with this shit this time! I hear the rustling leaves again. My reflection. Sydney. The town, whatever it is, laughing at me. Vaguely, I wonder if Flynn has been spurred on by it, too. We're puppets. Everything seems real right now. What's happening to me? To Flynn? What's happening between us? It seems impossible, but the breath that's stuck in my throat is very real, and I start to see stars and blackness begin to cloud my vision. After the things I've done, I guess I deserve it. I guess this is the appropriate way to go out. Flynn! A soft voice coming from the distance. It was me! I did it! Hands come away from my throat, and I take in one massive breath like I'm coming up from the, from the water after being under for, under for far too long. Spit and blood go down my throat into my lungs and I roll over, letting out a great cough, spraying the rock in front of my face with dark drops of blood. What? I watch blood drip to the flat rock in a steady rhythm from my nose, having to breathe extra hard though my mouth through my mouth because of it. I, I said I did it! It was an accident! I pushed him out into the water and he drowned! I grab the rock, stumbling to my feet, feeling that old anger return. He's going to kill Toby. Stop him! I stumble unsteadily to my feet and turn to see the lizard with his back to me approaching TJ. He will never leave Toby alone, just like Sydney. I stumble after them, hand tightening around the rock, the back of Flynn's head in my sights. What did you say? You could stop it for good, break the circle! I'm a few steps away from Flynn when I swing, ring it down on his head as hard as I can. The sound is awful. Immediately, Flynn bends over, screaming in pain as his paws come up to clutch the back of his head. I swing again, this time glancing off the top of his head, most of my power robbed by the poor angle. Flynn turns to me then, still crouched low, and tries to tackle me. I stay on my feet for the most part, but I'm pushed back several feet as I grab onto his back for support. I feel the cold water on my feet, and that's when I grab the lizard under his armpits and start to pull us both further out. Flynn doesn't seem to realize what's happening until the water's up to our knees. He stands up straight, and I see the blood running down his face from his head. He's glaring at me, expression wild, gaze clouded just like mine. And he takes a swing at me. It lands on my jaw, but my head is snapped to the side, another flash filled my vision. I'm able to grab that paw and swing him out further into the lake. The lizard stumbles in the shallows, standing up, waist deep, and that's when I throw myself at him with everything I've got. I tackle him into the water, and we're both submerged. I feel the change in Flynn's demeanor. The change as he realizes that he's gone from fighting for the truth to a fight for his life. Claws come out and scratch at my arms, but I ignore it. All the cold, the cold water numbing any pain that I might have felt. I kick us further out into the lake, my powerful tail and body coming up into play, doing what I was built to do. I know I knocked the breath out of Flynn when I barreled into him, so he doesn't have much time before he needs another breath. I'm not going to give it to him. I thrust us both through the water, downward against the rocks and sand below us. He grasps at me, kicking, his f kicking with his feet, and I catch a glimpse of his face then. It's not angry anymore or clouded. Instead, he stares at me with shock and utter disbelief. I'm killing him, and he realizes it. He also realizes the truth then. I see it in his eyes. What he's wanted to know for the past decade. He realizes in the last minutes of his life. He kicks at me with his feet, his movements becoming even more desperate. 
His paws move to my neck, trying to choke me again, but it's useless. I already have my breath. I watch bubbles spurt from his muzzle, then all at once in a gush. His paws go from strangling to pleading. He grabs me, he grabs me by the shoulder, shaking, tugging, looking into my eyes. But I'm relentless, a feeling of not being able to turn back too strong. His muzzle opens, trying to breathe, but only taking in water. His thrashing turns up a notch, scratching my legs with his claws as he kicks even harder. The second burst of desperation only lasts a few seconds, though. His movement's growing more and more tired, weaker and weaker. He's not looking at me anymore, eyes staring past me, toward the glimmering surface above. A place I'll never let him see again. His movements become more sporadic, like he's having convulsions. My instincts tell me to let go, to end this insanity, but my paws don't let me. I close my eyes and press harder. After a few more minutes, I don't feel any more movements. <sighs> We're gonna take a little coffee break, y'all. Let me have some coffee. This is, uh... This is, uh, intense. Slowly, I let him go, careful not to look at his face. His body stays still for the most part, moving back and forth gently with the current. I kick to the surface, my limbs numb as I break through to the cold air above. I pull myself along through the rocks, gra gasping and feeling incredibly weak for some reason. My stomach lurches, and for a moment I feel as if I'm about to, as if I'm going to throw up. I stay there on my hands and knees, staring into the water at my reflection. My face looks blank, and for a moment I see the horrible gashed mouth. I know I'm crying, even if I, even if the lake water is covering it up. What happened? But as I look up and I see TJ there, everything comes together. He's on his knees, staring past me, mouth hanging open. Suddenly I remember exactly why it is this all happened, and my chest fills with warmth and love for the cat as I stumble toward him on my knees. He just doesn't seem to notice me as I wrap my arms around him, pressing his face to my chest. I've got you. We're okay. He's not gonna hurt you anymore. I breathe heavily into Link's ear as I whisper to him, wanting to let him know that everything's going to be okay. Finally, I feel him shake his head against my body. Chase, why? Because he knew, and he was never going to leave us alone. He tried to kill us. I kiss the top of the cat's head gently, wanting him to know how much I care. Is he... He's gone. TJ sobs against me, but I only hug him tighter. Why did you do that? He reaches out to my left, and I look, seeing the paper, now the lake. I'm not sure what she's talking about. Me showing the Flynn the, the, the Flynn, me showing Flynn the paper, killing him. I don't know, so I don't answer. Instead, I hug him even tighter, whispering in his ear. For real estate. No! It'll be just like last time. We won't tell anyone. Our secret. Something turns ominous in the air. A horrible tension I'd felt dissipate when we'd opened the letter's returns. This town needs secrets. Well, tell them he tried to kill us. We had to protect ourselves. He leans tiredly against me, his arms limp. We're gonna be okay, just like last time. We can forget. He just doesn't respond. So look out at the lake and get a shock as I see Flynn floating there, close to the shore. He's face down, back just barely touching the surface. For a moment, I wonder if it's not too late. There's still enough life in him to be revived. That same feeling holds me back, and I cling to TJ instead. We're gonna be okay. We were manipulated. We keep moving in circles. The voice comes to the surface for a moment, for the first time sounding stunned. I return to focusing on the Lynx, the whole reason why I did any of this in the first place. Whatever happens, I'm going to protect him from all the shitty people in the world that want to hurt him. By the time we get to our feet, it's dark, and I have to help the Lynx along through the sagebrush. It's quiet. Robotic, like he was the first time it happened. I help him onto my car, and I get into the driver's seat, quietly pulling out the parking lot and leaving Flynn's empty truck behind. I help him out into my car, and I get into the driver's seat, quietly pulling out of the parking lot and leaving Flynn's empty truck behind. I watch it disappear in the rearview mirror, sitting alone under the yellow parking lot light. As we drive along the road, the Link stares out the window. I can still feel the tension in my arms and legs, making it difficult to keep the wheel steady. My heavy, wet clothes stick to the seat. Finally, we get to the freeway, and I look back again. Echo, just a series of tiny lights, insignificant on the desert landscape. It seems absurd that that place was where all that horror happened, where all that horror still is. Chase? I snap out of my daydream, looking over at the Lynx, his eyes glowing gently in the fading light. After we're done with wherever we're going... The police station? Yeah, can you give me a ride back to CCU? I missed my bus. TJ smiles sheepishly. I blink, wondering what to say. Does he not realize that... And then I realize what he's doing, what's happening. Just like last time. I clear my throat. Oh, yeah, definitely. I I'll give you a ride for sure. Thanks, Chase. He just smiles at me, then goes back to looking out the window. I wonder if he'll forget what happened. Like what happened, what, 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 what happened with Sydney. I hope that I can. 
We drive off into the dark desert, toward the soft glow of the paint in the distance. Five years later. Oh. Seriously? This is gonna be such a good fucking time! You'll be glad you came! The big grizzly bear nudges the coyote playfully, almost knocking the canine to the passenger seat. Oh, okay, like, let me try that again. Seriously? This is gonna be such a good fucking time! You'll be glad you came! Ow! Keep your paws on the wheel, or your paw at least! This road ain't in great shape! Cameron eyes the giant half-eaten burger and the bear's equally giant paw. Deb's other paw casually steers the wheel, elbow resting the out... Elbow resting out through the open window. The bear looks happier than he's been in a while, somehow grinning as he chews. The coyote sighs and stares out his, win out his own window, watching the desert landscape fly by. There's nothing like this in his hometown, and he found himself wishing he was back amongst the pine forests. Something he'd been wishing since he moved to Pueblo for school. Technically, this was his natural habitat, but he found the whole place depressing somehow. Empty and dry and rough. What you pouting for? I'm not pouting. Yeah, you are. Cameron sighs, deciding to change the subject. So, why couldn't Larry go again? I don't know. It said something about his car breaking down. I think he just flaked, though. Aren't there other haunted places in Pueblo that we could have gone to, like like by the school? The bear shakes his head, letting go of the wheel to crumple up, crumple up the foil that had packaged his sandwich, tossing it into the back. Not like Echo, dude. This place is the most haunted town in the entire fucking world. Cameron sighs once again, then suddenly grasps his seat as the car swerves and turns hard onto a smaller road, heading toward the big, a big blue lake. What the fuck? Whoops! Huh. Whoops! Sorry, I almost missed the turn. Gotta hit Lake Emma before the actual town. The road quickly ends in a small parking lot, empty and cracked. Why? Because a lot of shit happened here. The grizzly hops out of the car, making the entire thing tilt sideways as he squeezes his bulk out before reaching back in for the camera bag. The coyote allows himself one last frustrated sigh before he gets out as well. The bear waits for him, reaching out a large padded paw. Oh. Cameron takes and immediately draws it into a tight embrace and a kiss. The coyote tenses up for a moment, then waits until Devin releases him. Ah, can you not do that right after you eat a big greasy hamburger? Cameron makes a show of wi wiping his lips. Devin rolls his eyes. No pleasing you, is there? Nevertheless, the grizzly holds out his paw again and Cameron takes it. The two of them walking toward the faint trail. It's not a pleasant it's not a pleasant walk, the trail almost obscured by sagebrush and dry vegetation. Once they reach the edge of the lake, Devin has to help the coyote down the rough rocky terrain. The coyote feels like a child as Devin lifts him down off the boulders and onto the beach, the bear's tree trunk biceps bulging as he does. They stand there a moment, taking in the scenery, then Devin leans over to set the camera bag down. Cameron stands there, looking around at the very unphotogenic unphotogenic lake. So, what exactly happened here that you're so interested in? Devin takes off his backwards ball, his backwards baseball cap for a moment to smooth his head fur down. He puts it back on and bends over again to take out the camera. Some people say the lake is haunted too. Some guy got killed here in 2015 according to a few articles I read. Wonderful. That was self-defense though. Is that during the whole hysteria thing or whatever? Devin pans the camera across the length of the lake before stopping on Cameron. The coyote frowns at being filmed. No, that was in 2017. The bear pans the camera the other way now, and Cameron feels himself getting sweaty under his shirt already. Some coyote he was. It's so hot here! Once we set ourselves up in the motel, we'll have some shade. It's still open? Ha! Nothing's open! Everything's abandoned now! But we're gonna get arrested for tres- We're gonna get a- We're gonna get a- Oh, it's Devin. Okay. We're gonna get arrested for trespassing! The bear finally turns off the camera, leaning over to shove it in his bag. Huh! The cops never come down here. It's too out of the way. Anything for the views, right? Hey, my subscribers are gonna love this shit. Now come on, let's go back to the car. The bear turns and starts scrambling up the rocky boulders, Cameron waiting as he does. That's when the coyote turns around to glance back at the lake one last time and... A lizard lays in the shallows, splayed out, staring at the sky. Oh, it's the music for uh, Tangled Stars. Cool. But he's not staring because his eyes are gone. Half of his muzzle is missing. Fuck! Cameron jumps back, tripping over the rocks and landing against the sharp edges. The coyote hisses in pain, but fear spurs him on, trying to scramble up the rocks after Devin. The bear has already turned around, though, reaching down to pull Cameron up. Shit! Are you alright? What happened? As Cameron clings to the large bear, he looks back, but nothing's there. I, I don't know! I saw... Devin looks in the same direction, squinting. 
Cameron stares a while longer, then turns back and shakes his head against Evan's chest. When Cameron looks up at the bear, he's grinning, though. Holy shit, did you see a ghost? The coyote scowls. What? No, I just thought I saw something. It was the reflections in the water or something. The bear gives him a knowing smile. What? You're gonna be a believer by the end of all this, I know it. The grizzly hugs him tightly as Cameron frowns, still looking back at the shallows. It had been so real. But before he can really collect himself, Devin is pulling him along back to the car. Oh man. Is that how it ends? Fuck, is that how it ends? Ah, oh, how do well, then uh how do we get to see what happened with uh, Chase and TJ? Was that was just that just how their story ended? Mm mm. I wanna know more about what happened to Chase and TJ. So they both They both killed Sydney together. TJ pushed him into the water and chased around him. Say the evil little shit didn't deserve it. He was literally he'd been apparently he'd been trying to kill TJ for years. <laughs> apparently killed his dad too. Hmm. Man. Whew. Was that it? No, oh, I suppose that was it. Guys, let me know if I missed anything on TJ's route, okay? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye